the brain is made up of many types of cells. The most important being the neuron, which are able to send signals all around the body. They look something like this. Neurons consist of the main structures in it, the dendrites, soma, the cell body containing the nucleus, the axon, and the terminal. And these things wrapping around the axon are glial cells or helper cells. Now a message or signal from the brain or from somewhere else begins when the dendrites receives a stimulus which then travels down the axon towards the terminal. Once at the terminal, the neuron will, will release chemicals called neurotransmitters, which will then pass on the signal to another tissue, or in this case, another neuron. So here is another neuron with a dendrite, soma, axon, and terminal. Because this neuron has not received the signal yet, it is called resting neuron, whereas the first neuron was an excited neuron. Now let's cut a cross-section along the resting neuron's axon and see how the membrane looks like at rest the resting membrane potential. So the membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Here is the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid. At rest, the inside of the cell is negatively charged, whereas the outside is positively charged. The difference is about 70 millivolts. What creates these different charges across the membrane are ions. Let's look at the key players. Now in the resting membrane potential, there are more positively charged sodium ions in the outside, and there are more positively charged potassium ions in the inside. Now there are also more negatively charged chloride ions on the outside, these blue things here. And finally, inside there are big negatively charged phosphate and proteins. Now there are of course some sodiums inside the cell, and there are some potassiums outside the cell. Now this distribution of ions, this different distribution of ions, is what makes up the membrane potential at rest, the resting membrane potential. So how does the membrane look like when an action is excited and is propagating the impulse down the neuron? Well, let's take a section here, like before, and have a look. So here again we have the membrane, and the ECF, or the extracellular fluid, and the ICF the intracellular fluid. So when an action potential, an impulse, is traveling across the membrane, the inside of the cell will become positive and the outside negative, the opposite to what the membrane potential would be at rest. Now this is due to, again, the distribution of ions. In an excited neuron, there is more sodium in the inside of the cell and also potassium. The chloride ions stay outside, and the phosphate and proteins stay inside. So you can see the difference, the different distribution of these ions between the resting membrane potential and the action potential. So what kind of mechanism, or whatever, allows these ions to move across the membrane? Well, ions can move across the membrane because of special protein pores, or channels. And there are a few types. Now there are three types in the axon. There are the voltage-gated channels, which only work in changes in voltage across the membrane. It's inactive or closed during the resting membrane potential, or RPM, but is, but is open or stimulated with a, uh, with a stimulation, an action potential. Then there are the passive channels, or leak channels, that remain always open. Lastly, there are the mechanically gated channels, which require energy or some form of chemical to operate it, to activate it. So let's look at how the resting membrane potential is maintained using these channels and ions. Now there are two mechanisms which maintain the resting membrane potential, the RPM. These are the resting membrane potential chemical gradient and the resting membrane potential electrical gradient. Now let's firstly look at the chemical gradient and how, it, and, how it, and how it regulates the resting membrane potential. Again the phospholipid bilayer. The voltage gated channel is inactive at rest. Here are the passive channels and the mechanically gated channels known in the axon, which is important, the sodium potassium pump. It's known as a sodium potassium pump. Now, the chemical gradient essentially means that ions want to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, like diffusion. 
This means that sodium, which is found mostly out, will want to move in. And also chloride, which is mostly found out, will want to move in. However, because there's more, there's high concentration of potassium inside, it will want to move outside. Phosphate and proteins are too big to pass through the channels and so stay inside. And we will discuss the role of the sodium potassium pump later on. A point to make is that the membrane is much more permeable to potassium ions. And so this means that potassium can move across the membrane as it pleases more easily. So let's draw this in a different diagram. This circle represents the axon. This means that this is the inside of the cell. Sodium, which is more plentiful outside, will want to move in. Chloride also wants to move in. Potassium, however, will move outside because there is less potassium concentration outside. The black arrow represents the chemical gradient of the ions. Now ne next, let's look at the uh, electrical gradient. Remember that the, at rest, the inside of the cell is negative and the outside is positive. Again, we have the passive channels here. What the electrical gradient means is essentially that the positive ions are attracted to the negative ions and same charges ions repel each other. Same like before, we have the phosphate and proteins which are too big to cross across the membrane and so stay inside. Chloride will want to move, will, does not want to move in because there's too many negatively charged molecules inside, the phosphate and the proteins, and so negative repels negative. Sodium, however, because of such negative attraction, will want to move in, but at the same time, it is also attracted to the negative chloride on the outside. Same goes for potassium, which is attracted to the outside as well as the inside. Overall, so overall, if we go back to the circle diagram, we have sodium moving in towards its opposite charge. We have chloride, which will want to go out or stay out. Potassium, surprisingly, will move outside of the cell, even though there are much more negatively charged molecules inside. So to conclude, there is a net movement inwards for sodium, for the electrical and chemical gradient. There's no net movement for chlor chloride, and only small movement outward for, for potassium, for the electrical and chemical gradient. So again, for the electrical and chemical gradient, the net movement, so chloride will stay out, sodium will move in, only, and only a bit of potassium will move out due to the electrical gradient and chemical. Phosphate and, chlor and, and proteins will stay in because they're too big. And the sodium-potassium pump, which I'll introduce now, will then pump sodium which just came in out and potassium in so now let's look at how the sodium potassium pump works so the sodium potassium pump which is very important essentially so here's a phospholipid bilayer essentially it will transfer or pump three sodium sodium ions outside and at the same time, it will pump two potassium inside using ATP. And so its main goal is to make the inside of the cell more negative or less positive. So let me describe how, it's, how it functions, the sodium potassium pump. Here we have the sodium potassium pump. Sorry. Now, here we have the sodium potassium pump. So first how it starts is that uh, sodium ions inside the cell will bind to the pump, like so, three. It won't bind here because that's for potassium. So it binds here, and so three sodium potassium ions have bound. Then ATP causes the pump to make, to make a conformational change. This conformational change looks like this, we can say. So ATP gets converted into ADP and leaving one phosphate still attached to the pump. So this pump will then release the so, uh, sodium ions outside, and at the same time, because of the phosphate, the potassium ions will bind back in. And as it binds, the phosphate, which was still bound to the pump, will then be released, causing, back, causing the pump to make the back the conformational change. 
and the potassium can then be released in the inside of the cell. I hope that made sense and I hope you enjoyed the resting membrane potential video. I will make an actual potential video soon, hopefully. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.